Hi, my name is Gary Eckstein and I'm a doctoral student at the University of Southern Queensland here in Australia. I'm going to go through today how to structure or set up EndNote to support your systematic reviews if you're using Prisma. This has really, really helped me. It makes it so much simpler. Let's go across to my screen and I'll, I'll demonstrate. So we're dealing with Prisma, preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analyses. But, but what I'm going to show you can really benefit for any literature review uh, specifically. One of the things in Prisma is that we th there's a checklist and we need to meet certain criteria. So I'm going to be going through some of the things that will help you with the methods and the results. Now, I'm not here to to explain Prisma and I'm absolutely no expert at Pris um, with Prisma, but I'm just showing what has helped me. So one thing that Prisma does say is that we need to have a flow diagram and we need to uh, describe why we included certain studies and not others and so on. Now there's a really good tool online here and, and there's the URL estech.shinyapps.io backscore Prisma underscore flow diagram. So there are various steps we need to go through in, these, in the flow diagram uh, for Prisma. This tool, again, highly recommended. It'll create the, the diagram for you. But what we're going to do in this uh, tutorial today is I'm going to show how we can set up EndNote so that we can have a good reflection here, EndNote and with your flowchart, and we can sort of match them up together. So you know which articles you've excluded very quickly and easily in EndNote, uh, which you've included and so on. Because you might be able to see here that, for example, you've um, you know ex excluded certain uh, reports, but it'll be nice to be able to see that very easily in EndNote too. And, and I'm gonna show that. Now, what I've already done, and it'll make sense in a second, I've already done database searches. This is just an example. And in this case, it's uh, EBSCOhost. And then I exported the file so that I can demonstrate and import it into EndNote. And I've done for the same for Scopus. Now, just to let you know that um, I watched a video on this a few months ago, but I just can't find that video again. So I'm sorry, I, I can't give uh, the person that did the video uh, credit for it because I, I just can't find it. Um, but again, it helped me so much that video. So whoever you are, thank you very much. And, and I certainly hope that this helps other people as well. So let's go across to EndNote. So I'm in EndNote X9. Uh, it's just the version we use at, uh, at my university. So there we go. I'm going to set it up with various folders so that we can really keep a good track of how we're going uh, relative to that uh, flow chart we saw uh, with Prisma. So the first thing we do, I'm going to show you to do, and, and I highly recommend you do this, is just set up your your various um, your groups. So I'm going to set up four groups. So a group set is. Uh, let's call it a, a parent and then we add groups which are children underneath. So I'm going to go create group set and I'm actually just going to co copy uh, uh, from uh, from across the side here because my, my typing is so slow. So sorry, just bear with me. Um, again, create group set and let's just paste that in there. I'm oh, sorry, it did add one earlier uh, and I'll explain in a second. So. This one's called A underscore initial search results. Let's now create a group. We're going to create some groups underneath this. I searched in EBSCO. So what we're going to do is when we import, we're going to add the results from EBSCO in there, EBSCO host in there. Uh, and let's just create another one because I also searched in Scopus, for example. Something Sorry, my, my spelling, uh, my typing is absolutely terrible. So let's just uh, rename this group. And something I forgot to do here was put in the number of results. And, and we'll see why that becomes handy in a, in a short time. So let's go total equals XX. And we can fill that in later. And I will demonstrate that. And let's just do the same for um, EBSCO host quickly. Rename group. And here we'll go total. 
um, equals xx. So we're going to, when we do our import, we're going to put all our, uh, the files or the references that came back from EBSCOhost into there, into Scopus and there. So let's create another group and I'm just going to copy and paste again. So let's just create uh, a new one here. So create group set and I'm going to call this B underscore duplicates removed. Uh, the reason I'm putting A and B is usually, and I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong here, I'm, I'm sure one of you can help me and just leave a comment. Uh, by the way, I'm no expert at this, and I'm just showing what I sort of know and what's really helped me. Um, a and B, just so that it, it shows in the sort of correct audio, order according to Prisma or according to that, um, that flow chart. So let's just go back to it. So records identify from databases. So I've named my databases, EBSCO, Host, Scopus, then... Um, we removed some records, so that's what we're doing now. So let's go back into EndNote. And here we're going to, I'm just going to copy and paste again. And we're just going to create a new, smart, a new group here. And then, if, then two more smart groups. So this is when we do our uh, deduplication. Or, okay, and then let's go on to here. And we'll create a new group group set rather and we will call this C retrieval and what we're going to do here is we're going to add a few subfolders underneath here so uh, subgroup sorry so create group and let's just call this one uh, exclude we're going to go to uh, create group and we're going to call this one include and I will explain it all just in a short while and last but not least Let's create one called, uh, so create group, and we'll call this um, undecided. Then we're going to do the, the same thing yet again. So let's create a group set, and uh, we'll call this one D underscore, and I'm just reading from my other screen, phase, to eligibility and we're going to add this spelling is wrong there and we're going to add the same things as under C so let's create a group and we'll call this exclude we'll create group and we'll call this include and last but not least one more create group and we're going to call this undecided. So let me explain what we're doing here. So we're going to import, and, and I'll do it in a second, we're going to import those, um, those references we had from EBSCOhost and Scopus. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to put uh, those, those references I imported from EBSCOhost into that group there, the ones from Scopus in there. What I'll then do is I'll just number them just so that I have a permanent record of how many are imported. So if I import from uh, EBSCOhost 20, for example, I'll just change the label here to 20 because the problem is if we by mistake move, uh, delete or move um, some of our references out, it'll change that number. So we don't know what our original is then. So then once we've done that, what we'll do is we will copy all the references from both EBSCO host and Scopus into duplicates removed. We'll remove the duplicates. Then we will rename this. Let me just expand that. We will, sorry, rename it and, and just put the total number in there again. So how many remained or how many did we remove? Whatever you want to do. Then we go into the next phase and so on. So let me demonstrate. So let's import our references now. So we reference by going to file import file and I'll click choose and I've got my two files uh, the one was from Scopus and it's named as such and one from EBSCOhost so let's do the Scopus first so I'll click click open click import and there all my files are imported from uh, from Scopus so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, so it's just going to flash a bit because it's down, It's trying to find the attached PDFs, but just ignore that. What I'm going to do is I'm now 
going to drag and drop these across into Scopus and you'll notice I've got 15 entries. So what I'll do is I'll very quickly rename this and uh, sorry, where is it? My uh, rename group and we'll just n uh, number this 15 just so we have a permanent record of how many. Now let's do the EBSCO import. So we go to file, import, file. There it is there, open, import. Okay, so there all my entries, sorry, my entries are that came through from uh, EBSCOhost. Yeah, it's a bit annoying with all this flashing, but anyway. So I'll just drag and drop that across into EBSCO and there were 29 entries there. So I'll just rename this as 29. Let's just go back into EBSCO and let's just double check. Yes, there were 29 and in Scopus there were 15. So just double checking and let's look again. So there were 29 in EBSCO, 15, 100% correct. What I'll do now is I'll just select, go into EBSCO for, for, for example, select them all and I'm just gonna drag them into uh, duplicates removed. So that just copies the references across. You'll notice it doesn't take it out of EBSCO. And let's just do the same for Scopus. And I'll just drag it a drop across, sorry, into duplicates removed. So in total, I've got 44. So what I can do now is just select, um, select all my various references and uh, where are we? Find, we well, the first thing we could do if we, and I would actually recommend you do this, find your, um, find reference updates. Even though we've only just imported them, just to try and get them sort of standardized as much as possible. So when we do um, look for the duplicates, it'll just have more accurate information, It'll be more, uh, well, more accurate that is. Okay, so let's just go into references and where are we? Find duplicates. And it's going to find various, it's, it's looking, it's, it's found two duplicates here. Let's just, uh, we can choose which one we wanna keep. Uh, let's keep that one, for example. And on we keep going. Um, we'll just keep doing this. Okay, then what you'd wanna do is go through and uh, just check if you can see any duplicates. Just do a, a manual check through and see if you can see any duplicates. What you'll notice now is that, for example, because we've removed some of the duplicates, so we've got 39 uh, articles, you know, without duplicates. But under Scopus, the number has changed. We originally had 15 and now it says 10 because it happens to have just removed them or, or the ones I chose removed from Scopus. And that's why it's so important to have the total number there and manually do the total number because that number can change for any number of reasons. So again, let's now rename this and my camera's just in the way, way sorry, rename group set. Oh no, sorry, um, rename the group rather. Um, and we will just number this as 39, just so we've got that permanent record, just in case anything happens. Of course, you'll keep going then. So then we have these records. So what you'll do here is we will copy these across into, and let's put it into undecided, because this means we need to check what's going on. So we could rename this, uh, and you would call number this 39, for example. Now, you'd go through each of one of these, and for those criteria that first uh, the retrieval criteria, you'll go through and whatever your criteria are, you'll decide which ones to exclude, which you'll put in there and include which you'll put in there. You'll then uh, re uh, rename these with the total fields. And then of course the include will carry on onto over here and then you'll do your second phase. So this, this structure again aligns with this here. Then you can just come through and very easily just look at what you've done. Oh, so so uh, my initial search results, my database searches, there were, uh, well, actually there weren't, there weren't 39, there were actually 44. So we could then type in 44. We removed five. So if you come across again here, you could say, 
Right, and, and when you're fitting it in on the side, you can say we recognized however many, uh, 44, we removed 5, therefore we screened 39. We then excluded whatever, and it just carries on. So look, I hope this has helped you. It's, I've gone forwards, it's not perfect, I've gone forwards, backwards and forwards a little bit, but um, hopefully it helps. Please like this video, leave comments. Um, yeah, I'm Gary.